Hi, Dylan. Thank you so much for coming on the Thrival Nutrition Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. Um, you guys, me and Dylan have known each other since, I don't know. Seventh grade. Yeah. Long, long time. Um, so yeah. it's really nice to connect with an old friend. Um, so first off, just introduce yourself, who you are and what you do. Um, so I'm Dylan Humphreys. Uh, right now I'm at UCF, the University of Central Florida, studying uh, muscle physiology and exercise physiology. Um, I'm in my final semester, so I'm about to graduate soon. And I own a uh, small business, um, Fitburn Boot Camp. It's just a uh, locally run gym um, and a medically retired Marine. So I do a lot of uh, rehab with my clients and stuff like that. So um, that's pretty much it for me. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Uh, I know you've always kind of been athletic anyway, but what made you kind of choose this career? Did um, so yeah, actually, when I was in the Marines, I broke my back. And um, yeah. that's how I got medically retired. Um, I was injured for a long time and uh, nothing I was really doing was helping until I finally started doing like corrective exercise. And I started doing physical rehab on myself. And um, that's kind of what got me into training and everything was learning how to do stuff the correct way and avoiding injury. So you can you can be in it for the long haul. Right. I saw that on Instagram that you broke your back. What'd you do? Uh, it's, it's a lot easier to say I broke my back. Um, yeah. I, it was just a wear and tear kind of thing. So eventually, um, wearing all those like 80 pound rucksacks on my back with like a full combat load just kind of took its toll on my spine. Um, and then on top of that, like lifting heavy weights over and over again and not doing it in the correct form, um, kind of just ended up leading to like a whole kind of issue with my spinal column was just really messed up. All the discs are degenerating, got a bunch of herniations and stuff like that. So, oh my gosh, that's no fun. Yeah. I have scoliosis. It doesn't really affect me, but I mean, yes, yeah, some people don't even feel it. Like if they have scoliosis, stuff like that, they don't even, then it doesn't bother them, but yeah, some people are like, oh my God, it, it sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, so today we're going to be talking about like obviously building muscle and then muscle gains, kind of feeling that plateau. Um, so people are at the gym, they're lifting weights. What are some just basics you can give us some rules for actually gaining muscle? Um, so like the basics uh, that I kind of go by is just understanding how to focus and use intensity when you're in the gym. Um, like a common misconception is that you have to lift heavy weights to put on any type of muscle. Well, that's true to an extent, but that's not necessarily true for all um, aspects of resistance training. Um, but you should have a solid foundation of resistance training if you are trying to build muscle. But what I mean by that um, intensity is that if you are going in there and you wanted to lift, you know, 15 reps of a certain exercise, um, instead of lifting a heavy weight, you can do lightweight for 15 reps or so. But if you're getting to that 15th rep, and it feels easy, or it feels like you could have gone a little further, and you weren't struggling to get that last rep, you're kind of wasting your time in the gym. You need to be reaching the, the failure by that set if you really wanted to get that muscle burn and really break down the muscle to help it regrow and get stronger to put on a little more muscle like that. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely, sometimes it depends. Sometimes I'm in the mood for like just lightweight, high reps and just, I don't know, not really pushing myself. And then there's some days I feel like savage and wanting to <laughs> yeah. go. Yeah, <laughs> lift some weight. Um, okay. I like that. The 15th rep. Is there a specific rep that you like? Um, so for me, um, it just depends on the program I'm on. Uh, it really, I do get in this bad habit. I was in this bad habit of counting my reps, but like I said, understanding that intensity and just bringing your set to failure, um, is really where you want to be to build that muscle. I mean, you could be like, Hey, I'm doing, you know, four sets of 12 today, but you could sit there and get to that 12th rep and you still have a little bit of energy left over. You weren't feeling the muscle burn or anything like that. And you're kind of just, um, you're kind of not bringing their muscles to where it needs to be to put on a little more muscle. You're, you're not breaking down the muscle. Like it needs to be broken down. Right. Right. Do you, do you recommend like a mixture of it? Just so um, it, yeah, I, I would. Um, cause what, like the program I'm on now, for example, I do, um, I do heavy lifting followed by a light lift day. So like I'm, ba I'm basically structured around, um, the power lifts, the, uh, the squat, the deadlift and the bench press. And, uh, for example, la this, this previous week I did five sets of one rep. So I was lifting heavy weights. I was doing, um, you know, very heavy weight. And then the next day I would do two sets of 16 reps. So I do a, a heavy day followed by a light day. And that's just the program I'm on right now. That's just the example. Um, so I like to do heavy weight to kind of, um, to kind of build the muscle and then the higher resistance to kind of condition the muscle to get that nice like tone look. So that's kind of the program that I'm on right now. 
Nice. Okay. So someone's following all the rules basically. Um, is a plateau still possible? Like they're not gaining. What can go on? Like why do plateaus even happen, I guess? Okay. So what normally happens when you um, start working out is you get what's called beginner gains. Um, you start to see and you start to feel better. You start to see the gains happening um, within a few short weeks, especially if you're just now getting into the gym. Um, but anytime beyond that, it's, it's, you know, you might see the results for the first two, three, maybe even four months. But if you're going in the gym and doing the same thing over and over again, we have what's called the SEDS principle. It's specific adaptation to impose demands. So what's going to happen is your body is going to actually um, become accustomed to the stresses that you're putting on it. So if you're going in day in and day in out doing the same weight, the same exercises, the same workout on each day of the week, you're going to eventually run into a wall or a plateau where you're not going to be able to get past that unless you decide to change up the exercises, change up the rep range, change up your resistance. Nice. Um, and so how do we overcome that? What are some of your best tips? So my biggest tips were, uh, um, are to, uh, regiment your program. So you don't want to get in the habit of just like going to gym. It's like, Oh, I feel like doing some upper body today. I feel like doing some lower body today. I feel like doing this. What you want to do is you want to get on a regimented program and know, Hey, I'm doing this today. I'm doing this many reps. I'm doing this many sets and this is how I have to do it. And that way you can track and record your, um, your resistance. So that way you don't kind of have to guess next week. It's like, Oh, I think I lifted this last week. So I'm going to try to lift the, this, this week. And really you're not lifting more. You could be lifting lighter weight and you just don't realize it because you don't remember what happened last week. So that would be my best, best kind of advice to get through a plateau is to just regiment record and, and see the growth happening on paper. And then is there, I know people get so impatient. That's the issue is people get so impatient with weight loss with anything. Um, is there a time frame that people should look for? Um, no, I, I honestly don't think so. Everybody's different. So everybody's going to see gains differently. And, and there's, there's obviously different body types. Everybody responds to exercise differently. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to put a time frame on anything, but um, scientifically speaking, you can expect to lose a healthy amount of weight if, you're, if your goal is to like body fat, for example. You can healthily lose one to two percent body fat per month. You know, if you're really good, you can end up losing two percent per month, but you know, everybody has their days. So it's like, I would say that one to two percent body um, fat per month is a, is a good, um, is a good kind of number to go by. But again, nobody, everybody's different. You, you can't really put a number on anything or, or a time frame on anything. Yeah, I know. People Consistency love Consistency is key, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People love the numbers and they have this goal in mind. I'm like, everyone always asks me, so how long does it usually take? And I'm like, I mean, it depends where you're starting from. There's so many things that go into play. Um, mm -hmm. And then what is for rest days? Tell us about rest days and how that can help as well. Um, so yeah, obviously rest is a big important aspect of training. Um, I was in a slump for a long time where I thought I had to hit the gym seven days a week, you know, two hours a day. And eventually I got to the point where I was overtrained. I, I, I just couldn't do it anymore. And I really started to understand how important rest days are. Um, so now I like to kind of do like two or three days at the gym, then take a rest day. I normally don't go beyond three days unless it's like, I know, Hey, I'm going somewhere this weekend and I won't be able to work out. Then I might hit, you know, maybe three or four times in a row without taking a break. But um, rest is a very important aspect of training because when you're training, you're actually breaking your muscles down and rest is where you're actually going to regrow your muscles. So rest is very important. Should we be doing anything during rest days to help that facilitate that? Yes. Um, so for example, my rest days, um, right now I like to either do some type of, I like to call them active rest days. I like to go and I like to go for like a bike ride or, um, I do agility training for my cardio. You can bang out agility in 15 to 20 minutes. Um, it's really just a, a small portion of your day just to stay active. I do yoga um, to stretch the body out. Like on my rest days, I like to kind of feel, hey, am I feeling tight in my back today? Is my neck feeling tight? Um, I just kind of go by how my body's feeling. And then I like to stretch out where, um, where I'm tight at. So that, that can be done on a rest day as well. It's not technically a rest day. You're doing active rest. So you're still moving the body. Very important. Right. It's, it's so funny that people like, I always tell people like, you really need to listen to your body as simple as that is people don't, they just want to push, push, push. And I'm like, then again, that can also tie back into health and adrenals and all that and all so many different aspects of it. But, um, I like the active rest days for sure. Um, and you said you only work out or I guess you lift 
two to three days because I was going to say how um, many is there a specific right day? right now I live um my my program is based around the resistance training right now um it's an eight-week program if you're interested um just um kind of what I'm going by is uh, the big power lifts right now so it's like I actually am resistance training probably about five times per week um I try to limit it to two rest days and then after I get done with this program, I'm going to do a deloading phase where it's actually, I, I take it light for about a week or two and then go back into um, a new resistance training program, something like that. Nice, nice. Um, and then do you have any favorite exercises that help, you know, really pushing your body for upper body, lower body? Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, my favorite exercise is definitely squat and deadlift. Um, when I, when I hurt my back really bad, I actually couldn't deadlift for almost five years. Um, wow. This time last year, I couldn't even deadlift, and now I'm putting up over 400 pounds. Um, so it's really nice to, to move some weight again. Um, and I just love doing squats and deadlifts because, one, it builds your legs, and two, they're the biggest muscles in your body that you're recruiting. So that actually ties into um, increased adrenals, increased testosterone, increased growth, growth hormone, stuff like that. So it does have a good physiological effect to, to work those big muscles. And that's why I enjoy doing it. Oh, especially for, um, in the morning, if you do it in the morning when your cortisol is the highest, oh, yeah. it kind of helps balance that out. Um, what about upper body? Upper body? Um, it just depends. Uh, I like, I love doing dumbbells, um, especially for like bench press or something like that. Um, the reason I like doing dumbbells is because it adds like the stability factor in there. A bar is straight. Um, so you actually don't recruit as many of the stabilizing muscles that you need in your rotator cuffs. Um, that's why I enjoy doing dumbbells. So anything like overhead press, dumbbell uh, chest press, um, dumbbell rows, I'm a big fan of, stuff like that. Nice. That's so funny. I know there are certain exercises when you use stuff like that um, or the ball or whatever it is, you work muscles. You didn't even know that like you really don't work because they're like... Yeah. <laughs> um, and then how does nutrition play a role in muscle building um so nutrition tougher, in, so it's hard but i understand the importance of macros especially when you're trying to build the muscle right no doubt um nutrition is probably the number one aspect you need to be looking at when you're training um resistance aside especially um if your goal is muscle fat loss weight loss anything like that is nutrition needs to be your number one priority because the way I look at it is no matter how much cardio you do, no matter how much weight you lift, it's, you, you can't outrun a bad diet. So you really have to get your diet in check, especially if you're trying to lose body fat percentage and weight. Um, it's just a really big important aspect when it comes to putting on muscle as well because you need to make sure you're getting enough calories to support the mu muscle regrowth and the adding in the muscle and everything like that. I know calories are very personalized to each person, but is there a certain amount of grams, um, of like protein, things like that? Um, like you said, it, it's really personalized. Um, me, for myself, what, what I find it works for me, it doesn't work for everybody, is I try to get at least a one gram per pound of body weight. Okay. Um, yeah. So, for example, I weigh 165, so I try to at least hit 165. Um, but what also works for me is... Um, I do about one and a half uh, grams times per day um, per body weight. So um, I'm more of in like the 220 range, but I would say a good rule of thumb is trying to at least get one gram per body weight of protein that is um, just to help. With the, the to like, Cause I know it's more of what you usually eat. Is, is it pretty hard? Do you find? Yeah. Um, so it is actually pretty hard to get in your protein. Um, and I find that in, with my clients that I work with, that's kind of one of the hardest things to do. Um, and I think really what my best tip to get your protein in is to start, um, is to kind of center your meals around a lean protein source, whether it be in the morning, you're eating, you know, egg whites, um, you know, with, with oatmeal, you're, you're centering your main meal around the egg whites. And lunch, for example, I'm getting a, a chicken breast and centering my vegetables around my chicken breast. And for dinner, you know, a steak or salmon, just any meal is I like to um, try to center it around a lean protein source. So that way I'm sure I'm getting in the correct amount of protein without having to go to like a supplement, like a, a protein shake or anything like that. I try to get right. my whole foods. Do you feel like you need an extra meal? Like, are you finding yourself eating like four or five meals or still sticking to like three meals? Um, so me, I, I, um, I like to eat intuitively. So I like to eat when I'm hungry yeah. and I have a really fast metabolism. So I actually do eat about five to six times a day. 
Um, and the thing is, is I'm not eating huge meals. My meals are, are pretty small. They're around five to 600 calories. So it's like I eat about every two and a half to three hours. Um, that doesn't work for everybody. Like I said, um, some people go towards intermittent fasting. Um, some people do the, th- the three meals. So Yeah. Um, and then what's your best way to keep track of gains? Besides pictures. I always tell people to take pictures because I said I would swear I would have never gained anything if I didn't have a previous picture to look back on. Yeah. So aside from pictures, um, I would definitely say record the resistance that you do. If you are on a resistance training program, I would say, you know, I did 100 pounds on bench press this week. I'm going to try to do 105 next week. So that way you have that progressive overload and you are making sure that you are increasing your resistance so that your muscle can adapt to it. Um, but, but like you said, I say pictures are one of the best things because, um, how I say it is, uh, you're the last person to see any results. Everybody else is going to start complimenting you. And, and one day you're going to look in the mirror and be like, Oh my gosh, I, I totally look different. <laughs> yeah. It's cause we look at each, like we look at ourselves every single day. So we don't see that little microscopic gains or even losing weight or whatever it is. Yep. Absolutely. Um, where can we find you? Um, so I'm on Instagram and Facebook, uh, Dylan Humphreys on Facebook and on Instagram, my screen name's Humpa Belly. Um, and then I also have Fitburn Bootcamp. Um, that's also on Facebook and then it's Fitburn underscore bootcamp on Instagram. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on today. Absolutely. It was great seeing you.